Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. I am really happy today because my friend Dr. Mark is on the show. This is Meet My Friend Friday. You guys know that Dr. Mark Sherwood and I like to answer your questions here at the show. And today we've got a lot of them. We're going to be talking about a wife and a mother who's struggling with a low sex drive. We're going to talk about Hashimoto's disease, and we're going to answer some questions on hormones. Stick around. I think you're going to be encouraged. Well, welcome to the show. Hope you guys are having a fantastic Friday wherever you are. As you can see, you guys are watching on YouTube. I am back in the studio today. And it took Dr. Mark Sherwood to get me back here. So I'm back. I've recovered. We're still recovering pretty well from surgery. So thank you guys for praying for me. But it's nice to be in the studio and feel like I'm joining again the land of the living. For those of you who want to get questions uh, addressed here, you can go to HeidiStJohn.com forward slash mailbox Monday. That's the way to submit your questions. Those come to me and the ones for Dr. Mark were also sent to him. So we're happy to do that. And I'm always thrilled to have him on the show. My friend, Dr. Mark, welcome back. Hey, thank you. It's good to be here. It's great to see you. Welcome back to planet Earth once again <laughs> and happy Friday. Thank you. It's good to see you too. I mean, I wasn't joking. You're the reason I I drug myself into the studio today. I decided to put some makeup on my face and not feel like I was uh, living in the land of the dead. So I'm glad to see you. Yeah. Back from the crypt, as we were saying That's earlier. That's right. Yeah, right. I told you. These are, these, are my, these are my tales from the crypt. All right. Let's jump right into this because we, are, we have a lot of questions today mm -hmm. and I want to I get to as many as we can. I want to start off with a question about Hashimoto's because Rachel in Illinois and Christina in Washington had a similar question. I'm going to read Christina's question for you. Dr. Sherwood, I just found out that I have an autoimmune disorder called Hashimoto's. Can you explain what this is? What I have read about it on the internet is very confusing and overwhelming. How does a person end up getting it? What can I do for it? Are there foods to avoid eating, et cetera? Dr. Dr. Mark, what say you? So first of all, Hashimoto's thyroiditis is really an autoimmune disease that has antibodies created against the thyroid. The antibodies are called thyroglobulin and thyroperoxidase antibodies. Uh, and those things are tested. And what you went through is you saw your um, elevation of those things. And the doctor would say, you've got Hashimoto's. Uh, typically, what is done on that is they would prescribe you a medication, and it would be generally a thyroid medication, depending on various factors, that would might be levothyroxine or synthroid. Having said that, to your point and to your questions, um, what causes that? Well, it's varying factors, but the main thing that contributes to autoimmune disease in general is something called a leaky gut. Leaky gut is caused by what we put in our mouth. Hippocrates, the father of modern medicine, said several things that were very profound. Not oversimplistic, but very profound. He said, let food be thy medicine, and medicine be thy food. He says, uh, health begins in the, in the gut. He also said, disease begins in the colon. Now, having said that, this leaky gut phenomenon, just to get into this, so not to get overcomplicated, but it creates uh, permeability in the small intestinal wall where things from the gut can leak through in the improper sizes into the bloodstream. And the immune system's sitting there going, what in the world is this? And some of the proteins that leak through can be mimicked as proteins that make up glands such as thyroid tissue. So the body starts creating these antibodies against these proteins that are leaking through, but the body gets confused and it begins to attack tissues. So one autoimmune disease is not one, understand this, but it's all. It's an autoimmune cascade. The bodies begin to attack itself. So the way you want to address this is, first of all, understand that I have seen this, my wife has seen this, when you will do these protocols that I'm going to give you right now, contrary to popular belief, we've seen the antibodies go down. What did wow. I just say? That means that you can, in fact, stop, stabilize, and reverse autoimmune disease. So hold on to hope, my friend. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to um, stop the standard American diet. You have got to do that. The main triggers are going to be processed sugars, and refined grain products. The standard American diet is damaging for the gut, and that is the uh, majority of the culprit of all autoimmune diseases. So stop that. 
and then allow the body to heal itself from the GI system. Make sure you check your thyroid antibodies on a regular basis, every two to three months. Do not neglect them. You need to be checking TSH, T4, T3, uh, reverse T3, and also your, your antibodies. There are two that I talked about earlier, every two to three months. Make sure that the doctor is talking to you about nutrition. And if they're not, you need to find a doctor that will, because this is actually the way that you can fix this. And a lot of people will go send or levothyroxine as the drugs of choice with that. But you can go an armor thyroid or an NP thyroid, which is more of a natural, more complete thyroid that well, has. Well, that's what Rachel's taking. So what? Rachel's taking, she's, she says she is taking the NP thyroid every yeah. morning, but she's wondering if there are alternative treatments that don't involve taking a synthetic hormone. Well, NP thyroid is made from porcine. So it actually is a more natural a hormone with less ingredients than any other of the hormone medications. So NP, in my opinion, would be the best one to take. The worst ones to take would be like a Synthroid or Levothyroxine. And even Armor Thyroid has uh, three or four more times more ingredients than NP. NP has just a couple of ingredients, two or three. And so less fillers, it's actually pretty good. Um, without seeing your blood work, it would be you know impossible to advise you on things. But uh, things like selenium, Things like iodine and a good mixture of potassium iodide and an iodine would be about 7.5 milligrams of potassium iodide and then 5 milligrams of iodine, totaling 12.5 milligrams. That's a good one to get the thyroid working. Selenium, glutathione is another one as well. Uh, and vitamin C would help a little bit with that. But make sure you do all those things, Rachel. And when you do... Hang on to hope, and let's see what God does to reverse that. I love that, the, just the hope that you're giving her. Rachel, I want to remind you guys, and Christina also, you guys can become patients of Dr. Mark, and he, he sees people remotely. He's been seeing me remotely. And you can go to Sherwood.tv forward slash Heidi to find out more about that. Rachel had one other question that I almost missed, and I was just looking at it here in the notes. She, once, she said that she had COVID over a year ago, and she never regained her sense of smell. Yeah. Do you know of any ways to restore it? Yeah, Rachel, that's very common, unfortunately. You can actually, when you, when you really shore up the gut, right, that will help you a lot. But I want you to start considering taking uh, some vitamin A, about 5,000 IUs a day, and also consider taking a colostrum. I like colostrum a lot because it has the ability to get our secretory IgA, which is an immune system uh, function, and it, uh, antibody, but it'll help that get built up and help your barriers again. And then you can start using a little bit of zinc lozenges and use those a couple times a day. The minute you start getting a little bit metallic taste in your mouth, you're getting your taste back. So those things will help. Do them all and let's get your taste back so you can taste the good old fashioned beauty in a salad. There you go. I love that. Taylor in California. She says, I want to know if Dr. Mark thinks that there's a way I can go off of synthetic hormones via IUDs to prevent uterine lining, thickness, and fibroids. She's 38 years old. She's had uh, three children. She said her husband had a vasectomy, so she was excited to go hormone-free. Yeah. But then after that, back to really heavy periods and painful fibroids. Her doctor told her to prevent this from happening. She would need an IUD. She wants to know if you think there's a way to remove that and treat the root cause of estrogen dominance. Taylor, there is 38 years uh, young, right? So what happens is when you get close to this perimenopausal time with the average age of menopause being 50 or 51, um, estrogen is still produced. But unfortunately, testosterone and progesterone start to go down. And when that happens, you get this situation and someone call it estrogen dominance. You could flip it around. You could say it's testosterone deficiency, but the balance is skewed. So you could come back and add a little bit of micronized bioidentical progesterone. You can also add a little bit of uh, compounded bioidentical testosterone and bring a better ratio back. And over the course of time, you want to clean up the diet as well and see what the body's doing at that point. I think that advanced blood work would be a good thing to do, um, certainly, but yes. 
there is hope, Rachel, out there to get off of that IUD. There's another a similar question. Uh, we get a lot of these, of course, at the at the show. And this was an anonymous listener in Washington, and she wants to know what your take is on ovarian cysts. She said she has a bilateral dermoid cyst and an endometrial nodule. She says, if I can manage the pain, should I have them removed or should I leave them alone? You know, there's, there's both uh, sides of that equation. I'll give you both. Uh, one side of the equation is that if it's not painful and it's not growing and it's not bothering you, okay, right? The other side of the equation is if it is something that's becoming or is a problem and it's not healing itself, getting them removed is wisdom because it can become a carcinogenic risk factor, which may, would make sense. Uh, further, when you have one, that means you would have to think logically that you could develop another one and another one and another one because PCOS, for example, polycystic ovarian syndrome sort of creates these development of these cysts. So I'd want to know why you have it. Do you have more? Are more developing? Are you on the upswing of this? Is it growing? Is it not? And, and I would strongly consider all of those options. Get your information ducks in a row and uh, then make a good decision based upon God's direction. But I would not take off the table at all that getting that thing removed. Mm. Those are those are questions a lot of women uh, deal with these kinds of things, and I love I love that you're saying, hey, also listen to the Holy Spirit. We shouldn't Amen. we shouldn't discount that, you guys. We should be praying about these things. All right, here's a loaded question for you. Let's talk about sex. Mm. All right, so another one of these questions I get them, you know, pretty frequently here, and as you know, you know, I've talked about this. I've been teaching, you know, marriage workshops with my husband around yeah. the nation for probably 15 years. And this is sort of a, a question that we got out on the road quite a bit. But this comes in from an anonymous uh, listener, and she says she's postmenopausal. She's a breast cancer survivor, and she's now taking estrogen blockers every day, but it's impacted her sex drive. She wants to know if there are any natural supplements that she can take to revive this desire. And she says, and I love that she added this, my husband would be forever grateful. Obviously, you know, we can we can address this from the position of this woman being a breast cancer survivor, but I'd like you to take it a little bit farther because there are lots of women struggling with low sex drive, low libido who aren't taking uh, estrogen blockers. They're not breast cancer survivors. They're just struggling with this low sex drive. And I, I hear from women all the time who says, what can I do? My husband is frustrated and sometimes even angry about it. And I'd love to hear your thoughts. Well, first of all, realize, and I'll talk to the ladies out there first, um, you're not crazy. There's nothing quote unquote wrong with you. It is simply that your hormone cascade has been skewed. Remember, hormones are emails. We've talked about that before. And hormones in ladies are much more complex than hormones yeah, you in right. men. Yeah, so <laughs> in other words. We can get a standing ovation for that. The women across the nation oh, right now are like, yeah, Dr. Mark, he right, he right. Totally, and it's true, <laughs> you know. Women are more complex, but that's what makes them more beautiful, and that's why God made them complex to complete the man who is a little more simplistic, right? That doesn't make anyone better than the other. It just makes us complete each other. Complexity, simplicity makes a wonderful Congruent Turns out human. men and women are different. And this whole idea that uh -huh. uh, male and female are interchangeable and, you know, the oh. transgender movement and all that, it flies in the face of God's beautiful design of male and female. It does. Now, when you talk about the, the, the lady that gets into the idea of um, postmenopause, whether it be surgical, uh, you know, through hysterectomies, uh, total or partial, or just the cascade switch into menopause, you lose those hormones, progesterone, estradiol, and testosterone. I'll get back to the breast cancer survivor aspect of this in just a moment. But you can and should consider the following things. Communicate with your husband clearly. Get with a doctor who can have a conversation with both of you. And many times a counselor won't do that. They just, they, it's not what they do. And they don't right. really have the uh, background or training to do that when it comes to hormones. So have the conversation. Don't let it become an antagonistic one. Let it become a constructive one. Let it become a positive one and let it become a beneficial one. And then consider as well getting on some natural bioidentical hormones, at least testosterone. 
which would stimulate the brain to go down a pathway of improving libido. Now, if libido has a factor of this, such as vaginal dryness, which is very common, you can actually consider vaginal suppositories that would be an application a couple times a week that would include DHEA and estriol. And again, those aren't proliferative, so those would be very safe even for a breast cancer survivor person. So you got testosterone and you got this combination DHEA estriol, which can be applied twice a week. Now that would also be applicable for a breast cancer survivor person because the anastrozole, which she's taking, blocks estrogen. So if she's taking anastrozole with the fear that estrogen is going to drive more cancers, anastrozole blocks it. Testosterone is upstream from estradiol. So that would also block testosterone from converting into estradiol. So it would be very safe, right? Now, with the men side of this, this is men hear me. Um, you please do not say this. Don't go down this path. I'll give you two not to do's. Number one, don't think your wife has lost interest or love for you. Mm. That's a misunderstanding. It's an assumption that wouldn't be true. Have a little bit of sympathy and empathy, knowing that you don't walk in their shoes. You can't, and they bear children, and you don't. Right? So it's another thing to think about. Yeah. Um, number two, do not tell them just to get over it. Because if you do that, you're going to get a lot of um, animosity built up hostility, probably resentment. And so don't do that. Uh, sex, uh, intimacy is a gift from God, and, and it should be enjoyed. You should have that sanctity in that bedroom and anything goes in there. And it should be amazingly awesome. And sex is not dirty. It's beautiful. And you should mm -hmm. enjoy that every bit of that. And enjoy your the, the bodies of each other because they were created for each other. So they're yeah. created for your enjoyment. Yeah, we procreate. I get all that, but enjoy each other. So we've got to get that sense of intimacy back. And part of the woman's intimacy, get this, men, is communication. If you will talk to them and hear me, use your mouth half as much as you use your ears, you'll find that that'll work really well. Listen to them. Use the two ears, one mouth scenario. You'll get the ratio there. And, and communicate. And get involved in the situation with getting the hormones back in place. And then very importantly, and this is getting straight to this hardcore, even more difficult issue, when we talk about this idea of intimacy, it is not about trying to reach a climax. That's not the point. It is about being intimate and close to the other person in the most uh, close manner possible. That's what it's about. So your job men, is to honor and please your wife. When you do that, your wife will find you completely and utterly irresistible. And that if you'll kind of keep that mindset like that, instead of it ain't about you, dude, <laughs> it's about your wife. And if you'll do that, you'll find that that will provide you great benefit over time that will enhance the relationship. And so that, that is a, a very important tool that I just gave you men to, to get involved in that, and it'll help you a lot. Well, that is a fantastic send-off into the weekend, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yay! <laughs> it's a fantastic send-off into the weekend. You know, I think it's so interesting for all of the years, you know, Jay and I have been married going on 34 years, and for all the years that we've been talking to uh, men and women about marriage, it's amazing to me how different uh, we approach sex, right? Yeah. So I think, uh, and I, I'm, I'm making obviously a generalization here, but I think as a general rule, women need that emotional connection. They do to feel uh, that, that they want to engage in sex with their husbands. And, yeah. and uh, men, on the other hand, they want the physical connection before they can make the emotional connection. Yeah. And it's a really, it's this balancing of loving the other person and wanting what's best for the other person and understanding, putting yourself, I love that you said that, putting yourself in the shoes of the other person. And it, it's, yeah. it is such a gift. Yeah, one thing I say to the men is um, women, as it, again, general rule the idea of foreplay begins when you took out the trash yeah you right it began when you vacuumed the the floor so it began true. when you uh made the bed it began when you yeah. pick up something off the floor or you did the laundry you folded it that is the idea of honor and and that begins during the day foreplay is not about 
uh, just a little bit, a few minutes before the actual act. That's not it at mm-hmm. all. Mm-hmm. It's it's a it's calling your wife during the day and just telling her because that you love her and she's beautiful. Just yeah. because it's sending her flowers unannounced. It's doing things for her. It's it, it's rubbing her feet, rubbing her back, or sometimes, man, it's sitting there and just shutting up. Think about that for a moment. Yeah, it really is a powerful, it sends a powerful message. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jay has said to me, you know, many times over the years, and I, you hit the nail on the head earlier. He's like, man, he's like, I, he is, he is, my husband is not complicated. He's a very no. easy man to please. He's a very, he's a, he's a wonderful human being who just uh, is a very, he's just not hard to please. I, on yeah. the other hand, am very complicated, well, you know? And so he's often said to me, he's like, man, I spend my whole life, woman, trying to figure you out. And I was like, yep, looks like we got a few more years to go. The old <laughs> analogy that always stuck with me is um, men are waffles. You know, they operate in these little boxes, you know, right? Yeah. One yep. at a time. But women are spaghetti. Spaghetti. Everything yeah, yeah. is connected. And so the grocery yeah. store can be connected with the bedroom, can be connected with a toe pain, can be connected with hair. And I don't understand so, how that works. So you true. do. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> What's really crazy is we don't understand how it works either. It's just yeah. how it is. Yeah, it's it's just, just completely how it is. Yeah. But, you know, men can really compartmentalize things, yeah. you know, and uh, I I love I Mark Gunger has a wonderful series. I, you sound yeah. like you've already seen it. You know, laugh your way to a better marriage. Yeah. Where he talks about, you know, women's brains are like spaghetti and men have men can compartmentalize everything. He's like, yeah. when we want to think about something. We're very carefully walking. We take out that <laughs> one box and we pull it out. We open in the box and then when we're done thinking about it we put the box back women are just like all over the map oh yeah you so know, true ask your wife what's wrong i don't know you know and they that's true <laughs> and you, it's true <laughs> you don't know. why are you crying i don't yeah. know <laughs> and then men last thing i'll tell you is you don't have to fix it all the time just hey, stop come on. just yeah. stop and just be there and sometimes yeah. that's that's what your wife needs yeah it's so good i so appreciate your heart your heart for uh for people and uh, I love this is great. Like I said, what a great send off into the weekend, you know, <laughs> yeah, telling everybody, hey, go process. have a little fun this weekend. Right. Enjoy being married. It's such a gift. And uh, I just love that you have such a wonderful trove of wisdom to share with our listeners. Thank you for coming on the show. I so appreciate it. Oh, I appreciate you, too. Thank you all for having me. You're welcome. As always, people can find you right at Sherwood.tv forward slash Heidi. If someone wants to connect with you for a consultation or they want to because you've got supplements, all kinds yeah. of things. What are what can people find when they go to Sherwood.tv forward slash Heidi? Well, a lot. They're going to find a, uh, we do a webinar twice a month that's free and people can attend that and they can then schedule an appointment if they want to work with us. They can individually. We also have a multitude of individual programs that are sort of prescripted that they can do to transform their life. We have two-week programs, four-month programs, and more to come that people can just get in, plug in, and it's all done for you. So our job is to lead people down a pathway of true healing. And whatever that means, we are going to get that done all to the glory of God. Yeah, I love it. And I can can attest because you've been uh, working with me now for some time. Mm -hmm. It's a really wonderful way for you to find somebody who cares about you, body, soul, mind, and spirit. It's very hard to find uh, in healthcare right now, and you guys are offering it. So Mark, I appreciate you, my friend. We'll see you soon. Sounds great, Heidi. You guys want more information on my friend, Dr. Mark Sherwood and his medical practice. You can go to HeidiStJohn.com for its podcast. You can go right to his website at Sherwood.tv forward slash Heidi. Have a great weekend, everybody. We've given you a great start to your weekend, so make it a good one. And I'll see you back here again at the intersection of faith and culture.